One of my viewers wanted to know how to hook up a industrial proximity sensor or any kind of industrial sensor for that matter to an Arduino. And so here's a, a drawing from a handout I produced a while back. And this basically just shows how you would typically hook up a sensor. Um, our brown wire here will go to whatever our voltage source is for the sensor. Um, in this particular case, I'm using a 9-volt battery. Uh, but the sensor will handle a voltage between 10 and 30 volts. In most sensors, even though we're below the 10 volts that the sensor specifies, a 9-volt battery works fine. If you wanted to go uh, to a higher voltage, you could take two 9-volt batteries in series and use 18 volts. Um, but there are some issues we've got to take into consideration when we um, start doing stuff like this. 9 volts is good because we can use it to run both the sensor and power the Arduino through the VN pin on the Arduino. So all we have to really do for the output terminal is hook it to a pull-up resistor to positive 5 volts on the Arduino and our blue of course goes to common. So looking at the hookup here what I've got is my 9 volt battery for the power supply. I've got my negative voltage going to the blue wire on the sensor. I also have a little wire coming from the negative on the battery to ground on my breadboard down here. So this is ground for both the sensor and the Arduino right now. So we, we have to have a wire coming over to common or ground on our Arduino. Um, and I'm taking and powering the Arduino through V plus from the 9 volt battery through the VN pin on the Arduino. This VN pin on the Arduino is for an unregulated voltage that you're using to power the Arduino. It's really hooked to the same point that your coax cable would hook to your Arduino. Now, and, and, and that voltage becomes regulated by the built-in regulator on the Arduino to 5 volts. And what you got to be careful of here is you, you do not want to mix the 9-volt battery voltage um, with the 5 volts on the Arduino. So be very careful that you never hook a 9 volt battery or any other power source other than 5 volts to the 5 volt supply on the Arduino. Okay, so it's okay to hook it to VN, but the upper limit is about 12 volts, so you don't want to go above 12 volts or you risk burning out the regulator on the Arduino. All right, so I've got my V plus my from the 9 volt battery going to VN on the Arduino, and I also have it going to the brown wire on the sensor. So that supplies power to both the sensor, the Arduino. My ground is ground for the sensor and the Arduino also. And the only thing left is my output from the sensor. And what I want to do is hook this to an input pin on the Arduino. And I've got it hooked to pin 2 on this particular Arduino. So. What we're essentially doing here when we go back to this drawing is when the sensor is activated, this output pin on the sensor becomes grounded. When that happens, it completes the circuit from V plus on the Arduino to ground here. So this output becomes zero volts. But when we don't have the sensor activated, this output will be plus 5. What this means is that we have to process the signal backwards because we have a activated potential here on the output of the sensor of 0 volts and we have an unactivated output of plus 5 which is, which is kind of backwards from what you'd expect a sensor to do. But that's fine because we're putting this into a microcontroller. We can have the microcontroller interpret that data any way we want to. So I wrote some code to handle this. Oh, by the way, um, as far as my outputs go, I'm using pins 11, 10 and 11 
to output to LEDs. And I've got one red LED and one green LED. And my green LED tells me when the sensor is activated and my red LED tells me when it's not activated. So, and I also have, I went all, went all out here and I wanted some sound too. So I've also programmed pin 13 to output a tone, a one kilohertz tone when the sensor is activated. And I'll show you the code here in a minute. So you can see the sensor activated, the green light coming on, and you hear the tone when I put this uh, wire stripper in front of this inductive proximity sensor. Uh, the only other thing I have on here is a a resistor here. This is a 330 ohm resistor that I've got in series with the speaker. The speaker is really just hooked from the output of pin 13 to ground over here. And uh, the 330 ohm resistor is really just to limit the current from that port to a safe value for the speaker. So as far as our program goes, all we're really doing is setting up pins 11, 12, and 13 as outputs and pin 2 is uh, input. And it's important that we set up pin 2 um, as an input pull-up pin because what we're doing is we're using a resistor that's internal to the Arduino and uh, this turns out to work out real well. It means we don't have to put a resistor in there. So in our, um, once we've got our our output set up, then as far as the rest of the program goes in our loop, we basically set up an if statement. And for that if statement, we're checking to see if the input's high. The input's going to be high if we don't have any sensor activation, because the sensor, when it's activated, pulls the output to ground. So if we don't have that happening, we're not pulling the signal to ground, that means it's going to be positive 5 volts, which is high. Um, so if it's high, then we, we want uh, our pin 11 to be low, and that's this uh, LED right here. And we want pin 12 to be high, that's hooked to our red LED. And we don't want any tone under those circumstances either. The other situation, the other possibility is we do have the sensor activated, like this. Okay, if our sensor is activated, then we want pin 11 to be high, that's our green LED, and we want pin 12 to be low, that's our red LED, and we want to make a tone on pin 13 of 1000 hertz, and that's the tone that you hear. So it's fairly simple. Um, it only requires a few components. I went a little bit all out here. You might just want to make a tone, or you just might want to turn on one LED so you can just leave one set of these LEDs off. Um, you can play with the logic and make anything happen that you want to happen. So this is what you want to do. Now this is just for a syncing sensor, um, a NPN sensor. I'm going to do another video on a PNP or sourcing sensor, hooking it up to the Arduino, and it's a little more complicated. So I don't recommend you hook up a sourcing sensor to an Arduino, because if you do, there's a high probability you're going to burn the Arduino out. So don't do that. Uh, the next video will follow. I just didn't want this to go into too much time, especially since the viewer wanted to really just know how to hook up a, a syncing um, NPN sensor. So this is the way you do it, and there's all kinds of options for this. You could uh, use the output of the sensor to drive some load, um, a solid state relay. Um, you can make it like a tone like I've done here. Remember, these proximity sensors are basically binary sensors. They're either on or off. There are some sensors you can get that will give you analog outputs, but most proximity sensors are strictly on-off devices. So I hope this is helpful. Let me know. Talk to you later.